There was no place for us in, in school. I would argue that the greatest waste of time in my life was the four years I spent in high school. And this is coming from an educator. That there was, from the food we were fed to the only way we were really accepted in school, you know, the um, black boys are the mascots of any high school that they're in where I grew up. I don't know about other places. I've seen it in other places, though. I see it now at, at, at universities. Well, like the black, the black dudes are, the, you know, they're, they're the provocative part of your experience in high school or college or in the workplace, you know. And for me, it just, it didn't speak to me. White boy who walks in the room and is animated and moving around and maybe even a little cheeky is smart. And isn't, isn't he smart? Isn't he cheeky? He's almost looked at as, well, boys will be boys. A child of a boy of color, especially an African-American boy who walks in the room exhibiting the same behavior, walks in and says, hmm, I might need to keep an eye on him. And that, I really believe, is our internalized racism, that we are afraid of these young boys. And I'm talking young boys, four years old and above. And that instead of the teacher looking at him or herself and saying, what is going on with me, that this same behavior uh, creates fear in me instead of admiration, we pathologize the boy of color. Race always deals with boxes, right? And I, th I think when we are, so let's say you grow up in the suburbs, you know, or you grow up in an affluent area in a city that has an affluent area and a ghetto, but you're black, a black boy. And you, so you get to school and there's a box for you. And that box says you rap, you're an athlete, you're slightly to highly misbehaved. You, um, you're not involved or into your education that much. You sell and or use drugs. That's the box that you're accepted in. And in order to play ball, no pun intended, that's how you interact with yourself, your own identity, and this is how you're cool. But you feel like the box that it traps you in is you feel like to be healthier, to be in a more sound mind state, to, to think and know and come from a place of foundation in your life is something that you have to be ashamed of and you have to denounce it can drive you crazy. So my sophomore year, I took a trip to Appalachia with just a religious kind of service group. And um, we were set up with little home repair projects in this very small, rural, low-income community in eastern Kentucky. And some of the houses didn't have running water. Some of them didn't have electricity. And they were down these rutted roads and in an area I just never knew existed and conditions I didn't know existed in our country. And at the same time, um, there were these huge coal corporations just raking in huge money in the same communities. And it just made me look at what was wrong with this picture and what did I want to do about it. And I ended up wanting to take more people to Appalachia and take people to the Deep South and just give them a, just immersion experience in poverty and give them an immersion experience in racism. More and more we came to this understanding that the problems that our society was facing were systemic, that they were not the problem of individuals. So we had started down this path of trying to understand systems. And in the course of that, I met John Powell, who uh, is very passionate about race as well. And so he started um, ex talking about his perspective about how he saw race playing into all this. And of course, when he started talking about race and how it operated in our society, it immediately started resonating with me because it started explaining all of these personal experiences, these individual experiences that I had had in a way that I could see that they fit into this much larger system. That it wasn't just 
my father being an immigrant or wasn't just my father being dark skinned. Um, but this was something that he, this experience he had had, my father had had, as an experience that he shared with many people who found themselves being described in similar ways.